Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we look at best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. I'm Anthony Kent. And I'm Derek Morris. And our topic today, well, it challenges me. Anthony, talk to us about the, the opportunity we have on Ministry in Motion today. Sure. The topic that we're addressing is how to minister to people of influence. And we know that it can be quite intimidating to, to reach out to people and to meet with people significant people of influence. I think about my own ministry as a young pastor. Uh, the thought of meeting the mayor, let alone developing a working relationship, friendship with that person or his civic leaders seemed uh, uh, intimidating to me. So I, I'm looking forward to this program, not only to give us an example, but maybe some practical ways that we can build relationships with people of influence. Exactly. And one of the great things, we have Pastor Wintley Phipps, joining us as our special guest, who is no stranger to, to meeting with people of influence and ministering to them as well. I'm really excited about our guest today. Anthony, I'm really looking forward to this discussion. Thanks, Derek. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more of Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion, where our topic for this, this program is how to minister to people of influence. And we're delighted that our guest today, a very special guest, is Pastor Whitney Phipps. Thank you so much for joining us, Pastor Phipps. My pleasure. Good to be with you. Now, Pastor Phipps, there's a question I've got to ask you right off the bat. Okay. You have a phenomenal voice. Oh, very both kind of you. Thank speaking you. voice and singing voice. Yes. This, of course, is, is natural, but how did you develop your voice? Oh, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Uh, <laughs> when I was about 14 and a half years old, 15 years old, my voice changed, and I was literally sounding just the way you hear me today. I, I, but I was a lanky kid at 15 years old, and I didn't have voice teachers then. I was growing up in Montreal, Canada. I was actually born in Trinidad. And uh, when I was 10 years old, we moved to Canada. And so I didn't have voice teachers, but I found my voice teacher on the radio. I began to practice sounding like my voice teacher on the radio. I was imitating and trying to sound just like him. And uh, little did I realize that I was developing good vocal mechanics and good vocal technique that would last me the rest of my life and ministry. Uh, and so for my 34th wedding anniversary, I said to my wife, you know, I've never heard my voice teacher that really helped me to learn how to sing. I've never heard him in concert. I wonder if he's in concert anywhere. So we Googled and lo and behold, he was in concert. So I bought plane tickets, I bought uh, concert tickets and something impressed me to send him a message. And I emailed him and I said, sir, uh, you, you would not know or remember me. I said, uh, I was 15 years old in Canada. My voice changed and I didn't have a voice teacher. You became my voice teacher on the radio. You became my musical inspiration and my musical North Star. And I want to tell you what I've gone on to do with that inspiration. And I told him that I had recorded 23 albums, Grammy nominations, was a soloist at Diana Ross's wedding and uh, been on every television program from Billy Graham Crusades to Saturday Night Live, uh, all a range of different things. And I said, uh, so I just want to thank you for the inspiration you've been to me. Well, I got an email back saying, Sir Tom Jones would like to see you and your wife when you come to Las Vegas. Extraordinary. Because <laughs> that's how I learned to sing, was singing, you know, it's not unusual to be, you know, I was, oh, and, and that's one brother who could sing, yeah. his, his yeah. tones, and even today, when I heard him in concert, he's 70 years old, and still sounding as wonderful as he did when he was 50, 40 years old, and mm. so that's how I learned to sing. That's an extraordinary story. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And it, it's, it's a very helpful springboard into the topic that we want to discuss. Yes. The, the fact that you would make contact with Tom Jones, yes. who is 
He's a big fish. Yeah, he's, you a, know, he's in the, a legend, yes. Yeah, yes. In, in the entertainment industry. Absolutely. And to make contact in, in that way. Yes. Let me ask you another question. Do you remember the, the first person of influence that you actually made contact with? And, and how did you facilitate that meeting and that, that an initial contact with that? All my life, I've always carried inside a feeling of destiny that it would be my experience to minister to and touch the lives of some of the most unusual people in the world. I think it grew out of my hunger for significance. As a kid growing up, you want to be somebody important one day. Mm, mm. And, and in my little child's mind, I was thinking, you know, if I could be around other important people, maybe that meant I was important too. Yeah. And so I was always drawn to, first of all, people who seemed to uh, be people of destiny, who came onto the scene, did what they were supposed to do to touch the world and touch millions of people. Achievers? Yes, I, I, and I was always drawn, drawn to that. And so the first real person of influence, when I say influence, a very famous person that I met, uh, that, and, it, and it was transformational, mm -hmm. changed my life, but it changed my life in, in another kind of way. It happened to be my musical hero before Tom Jones, and it was Sly Stone. Now, you would have no idea who that is, but Sly Stone is one, right. of, the great, is. one of the greatest pop stars, rockers uh, of the 20th century. I mean, uh, Woodstock, uh, he was huge in terms of uh, w being well-known and, and, and top-selling records. And I'm finagled my way backstage at the Montreal Forum to, to just see, catch a glimpse of this hero of mine when he was coming into this concert. Well, when I met him, as they dragged him out of the limo, he was stoned. Uh. And I was crushed because my hero was incoherent. And, and they were dragging him out. And I decided that day, you know, I don't think I want to be another Sly Stone. And so he was probably the first person I met who was very well known, but it had the adverse effect in the sense that it helped me to crystallize. There were some parts of being well known or some things that went along with being well known that I did not want for my life. Yeah. Now, in terms of someone outside of uh, that experience, uh, it would probably be uh, a man by the name of Jesse Jackson. Uh, when I was a student o at Oakwood. Now, can I just interrupt yes. you? Je Jesse Jackson, tell us more about he who Jesse Jackson is. Well, Jesse Jackson happens to be one of the most influential African Americans of our time. He, uh, if you've, he was the first African American to really make a big splash running for the presidency of the United States in 1984. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I had an experience one day, I was uh, with him in Angola, uh, and he was being uh, hosted by the president of Angola. And by, at, at that time, it was 1986, and Angola was at war with right. South Africa. And, and they paraded out a uh, prisoner of war, Angola did, by the name of Colonel de Toy. Right. To uh, show Angola could capture prisoners of war. And, they, and Jesse Jackson was there. And the reporter asked him, do you know who Jesse Jackson is? He said, yeah. He said, oh. He said, well, what do you know about Jesse Jackson? He has a lot of success in freeing prisoners of war. Uh, so he's had a lot of experience going and extricating people who, whether it's from Iraq mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. when the, the flyer was shot down, uh, the American flyer was shot yes. down yeah. in Iraq. He was the one that came and brought him out of there. And so uh, he was probably one of the most influential people. That's fascinating. We'll come back to this story. Okay. Stay with us, Ministry in Motion. We'll be right back with Pastor Phipps.
Welcome back to Ministry in Motion, where we're, where we're exploring how to minister to people of influence. And we're delighted that our guest today is Pastor Phipps. Pastor Phipps, before the break, yes. we were talking about your meeting with Jesse Jackson in right. Angola. Yeah. How did you meet Jesse Jackson? I met Jesse Jackson uh, when I was a student at Oakwood University. The former president of the student of the uh, university, his name is Dr. Frank Hale. Right. Uh, he was attending an expo in Chicago that Jesse Jackson was hosting and brought me up. And I remember this moment where he pulled him into the doorway as I was about to sing, saying, stay right here and listen to this. And that was the beginning of a tremendous friendship. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, when Jesse ran for president of the United States, mm -hmm. I, he asked me to sing right after his speech and so I was able to go before 60 million people and sing a song, a gospel song, God Uses Ordinary People. And that political convention mm -hmm. for just a moment became a church. And it was a great moment. So a, a mutual friend yes. that you had no hand in yes. arranged your, your, your meeting of Jesse Jackson. Okay, L let me tell you, my life has been filled with... Um, some people call it serendipity. I know it's providence. Mm -hmm. Moments, I have never had a manager. I've never had an agent. I could not orchestrate the experiences I'm about to share with you. Um, and it, Jesse Jackson was, was, was just a beginning. But 30-something uh, years ago now, I'm on an Eastern Airlines plane coming from California. And... I see this flight attendant who looks a little discouraged, and I got a cassette. They didn't have CDs then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I gave it to her, and I said, I feel impressed of God to give this to you. She said, thank you so much. She said, uh, I travel with a cassette player. She said, I've been having a really tough time, and this will be such a blessing. When the, uh, what happened was uh, three days later, she's working another flight and sees a man by the name of Cliff Barrows who directed all of the music and the choirs for the Billy Graham Crusades for the last 50 years. Wow. And she said, Mr. Barrows, it's such an honor to have you on my flight. She said, but can I ask you something? Have you ever heard of a young man by the name of Wintley Phipps? He said, no, I've never heard of him. She said, hold on a minute. She went back to her purse and got this cassette and handed it to him and said, this has been such a blessing to me, but I want you to have it. This is providential, isn't it? Absolutely. Three weeks later, I get a call from Cliff Barrow saying, we want you to become one of the soloists with the Billy Graham Crusades. Mm -hmm. And so for the last, for 25 years, it was my honor to have associations with Billy Graham, mm. to travel with him to crusades around this country and Moscow when he had his first crusade in Russia. Mm. And uh, so I would say that uh, the, you were asking about ministry to people of influence. The first thing is be open to providence. Yeah. Be open to, most people don't realize that God orchestrates every day of your life. Mm. And most of us aren't sensitive and open and waiting for, anticipating almost. Yeah. Who's the next person, whether they be well known or not? Mm -hmm. Because just because someone is not well known doesn't, you, you have no idea where God is going to take that person. Yeah. For example, I'm singing uh, 30 years ago in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. I come down off the platform, a young lady's standing there. She said, excuse me, sir, I just heard you sing. I feel like I can talk to you. Do you have time to talk to me? I said, sure. So she came by our home and we talked together, prayed together. And after praying with her, I looked at her and I said, you know, before you go, God has impressed me to tell you he's going to bless you and give you an opportunity to speak to millions of people. She said, you think God would do that for me? And it was Oprah Winfrey. Oh, you're joking. And that's how we met 30 years ago. I could not. That's astonishing. Know, I yeah. could not know that this woman who was making $22,000 a year, who really some felt was about to be fired from her job because when she would read she was an anchor person on television. When she would read stories of kids being killed in fires, she'd choke up sometimes on the air, and that wasn't the kind of demeanor for an anchor person, and they were looking for ways to get rid of her. Really? And here she comes, and I feel something, I sense something, 
And I said to her, wait a minute. Mm. You, you, you've got a destiny that is beyond anything. And now she is the richest black woman on planet Earth. On planet Earth. This is just wow. <laughs> you know, uh, and, uh, and there are many, 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 many experiences in my life. So the first thing I say is be open to moments of providence. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. treat people with respect when you don't know who they are, exactly. where they're going, yeah. or what they can do for you one day. Exactly. The Bible says you entertain angels unawares, that mm -hmm. you don't even realize the destiny God has for some people. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's been like that. My phone, sometimes they've seen me on television. Mm -hmm. uh, my phone rang once, a lady said, is this Wintley Phipps? I said, yes. Yeah. She said, oh, I'm so glad I found you. My boss has been trying to find you. She was standing in front of the television listening to you sing, and she was crying. And she said, find this guy, please. She said, I'm calling you for Diana Ross, and she wow. wants you to be the only soloist at her wedding in Geneva, Switzerland. Now, Diana Ross is a famous musician. Is Absolutely. that Diana Ross? that Diana Ross. Diana Ross and the Supremes, Diana Ross. And, uh, and I'd never met her before. Mm. But she's standing in front of a television, moved, and reaches out uh, for me. I've had a lot of associations with um, the political realm because I lived in Washington, D.C. area for many years. And so uh, I've had the honor, the honor and the opportunity to sing for every president of the United States since wow. Ronald Reagan. So I've met Jimmy Carter, I've met Ronald Reagan, I've uh, President Bush, father and son, and President Clinton and uh, President Obama. And uh, so it's, it's been a fascinating eye view to be able to sit at a breakfast table with some of the most powerful people yeah. in America. I want to come back to some of the people that you've, you've met and explore that a little further. Yes. But just listening to your comments before, it, it sounds as though really a converted, humble person who's available to the leading of God. Yes places themselves and God places them right. in a position where he can use them with people of influence. Absolutely. But it's, it sounds as though you need to make yourself available to God's leading for that purpose. Absolutely. And be to, to anticipate, all right, who is it today? Yeah. Who is it today that God wants me to touch? It could be a mayor. It could be the person at the checkout counter because you don't, you don't know where that person in that checkout counter might end up owning the grocery store chain. Well, Oprah Winfrey. Oh, and Oprah Winfrey, you yeah, just don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Stay with us. Stay with us, viewers. We're going to have more of Pastor Phipps and ministering to people of influence right after this break on Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion, where our special guest today is Pastor Wintley Phipps, and we're exploring ministering to people of influence. And joining us for this segment of the show is our co-host, Derek Morris. Pastor Phipps, before the break, we were talking about the presidents that you've met with, these influential yeah. people. Yeah. People of influence, are they different to, to the regular Joes of the world? Yeah, I would say different in only one respect, only one respect, and that is they, I, I shared with another, with Oprah actually one day, um, there's a big difference between trying to be the wind and learning to ride the wind. Okay. And people of influence know how to sense when there's a flow of destiny and how to get in it. Yeah. And that's how they get where they are, yeah. you know, because there's no, very few of us can sit around and say, okay, let me become the president of the United States. Let me become the CEO of GE. You know, you, you don't, you, but, but if you're s s smart enough, sensitive enough and equipped and, and capable, you are able to figure out which way des the wind of destiny is blowing. So it's not your and own energy that, that propels you in this. Exactly. Right. You yeah. set your sails yeah. and, and to, the, to the wind of destiny that's blowing. So they're different in that respect. But 
in most respects, they are just like you and me yeah. in the sense that they have needs, they have dreams, they have hopes, they have discouragements, they have health issues, mm -hmm. uh, they worry about things. As a matter of fact, I would say one thing does happen to people of influence, and that is the higher they rise, the, the more augmented their problems are to the world and, and to them. More public. Yeah, yeah. The, the public exposure. And so they find themselves often very alone because, for, for several reasons. One is that when you get to a place of real power and influence, most people don't want to tell you what you need to hear. They, their jobs depend on you being happy. So the emperor does, doesn't, has, no, has no clothes, but you tell me he looks great, yeah. you know? And, um, and so when you're ministering, you have to be, to people of influence, mm -hmm. you have to be authentic. Right. You have to be honest. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to risk losing the relationship for honesty. Mm. Uh, for example, I'll give you one quick story. Um, it was my honor and pleasure to know President Clinton because I mistook him for the governor of Alabama when we <laughs> met and, uh, and when they introduced him, I said, oh my goodness, you know, and, but he remembered that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we became friends and I would see him at different functions and uh, and when the Monica Lewinsky story broke, I watched him going through a very difficult time. Mm. And it's interesting. Most really conservative Christians didn't want to have anything to do with this president who was going through this very public scandal. Mm -hmm. uh, they ran from him like he had leprosy. And, and, and not running from him because they didn't want to be tainted, but many of them were so angry, they didn't even feel that he deserved ministry. Mm. Mm. They, didn't want, they didn't even want to minister to him. Yeah. And uh, God impressed me, send him a message. And I said, Mr. President, God has impressed me to tell you, just please read Psalm 69. In Psalm 69, David says, save me, O God, for the waters are coming into my soul. I'm sinking in deep mire where mm. there's no place to stand. The waters overflow me. I'm weary of my crying. My throat is parched. Mm. I knew he'd identify where David said, those that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. Yeah. I knew he'd identify where mm. David said, Lord, you know my foolishness. My sins are not hidden from thee. Mm. Well, the president read that psalm and it touched his heart so mm. that he called his cabinet members, yeah. shared with them from Psalm mm. 69. You know, it's interesting. Back to what you said, Wentley, we just got a moment left, but yeah. you took a risk at yep. that point, yep. that God, back to you, the principle of God had led a providence to give you that relationship. Exactly. And that now you were willing to speak the truth in love, take the risk that exactly. he might reject it or you. Exactly. And yet God turned that into a great blessing for him. Yeah. Mm. And I've had instances where people have, of influence have actually rejected, but many, most have come back around to say, you were right, and I needed that, and thank you. You know, listening to your stories too, it, it seems as though you're respectful of people of influence, but not intimidated by them. Yeah, that's probably a good point, and probably I don't have enough sense not to be <laughs> <laughs> intimidated by them. No. Uh, and I guess um, when you see how God has allowed you to impact the life of other people of influence, mm -hmm. mm. it gives you a certain level of confidence in him. Yeah. Yes. That, you know, the old folks used to say, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. Yes. Or there's another gospel song that says, he'll do it again. Yeah. And so you, you feel, uh, it's like riding a bicycle, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, after a few times you, you feel, okay, I, I, I can speak to the President of the United States without shaking. Yeah. <laughs> God has given you courage. He's confirmed your ministry. And yeah. the insights today have been very practical. Uh, very. And an, another underlying one that I heard in your stories as well is that people of influence, they too have needs. Absolutely. Needs to be ministered to and, and so forth. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's been my honor and pleasure 
to reveal Christ, to reflect Christ, to minister as Christ would himself, whether they be Democrat, Republican, mm -hmm. whether they be North, South, rich, it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter. They are people who need the Lord. Powerful. And that's how I approach it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Pastor Phipps. The yeah. insights that you've, off you've offered have just been wonderful and fascinating so. too. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed today's program on Ministry in Motion. Join us for our next program. But in the meantime, come and visit us at our website, ministryinmotion.tv. There's lots of resources there for pastors, teachers and elders. Or send us feedback to our email address, which is feedback at ministryinmotion.tv. We're looking forward to the pleasure of your company for our next program. Join us on Ministry in Motion. Until then, may God bless you and your ministry.